Hey, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. We're actually going to have a fantastic time. We're going to do some birds today and um, we'll do a duck decoy. This is the finished painting. I hope you'll work from this when you uh, it's time to do your watercolor painting. You can work right from this. Um, I'll zoom out just a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so I hope you'll use this as your guide, as your painting for your washes, your colors. And um, this is just really um, a painting that everyone can do. We're going to show you how we actually create a preliminary pencil drawing so that you have uh, a first practice run doing your birds and our uh, duck decoy here. So we do a practice run of our uh, just a quick sketch and then once we do that we draw that onto our watercolor paper. We have some Fabriano, beautiful Fabriano paper here and uh, so I'm hoping you'll try this. Uh, if you've never done birds before, um, ducks and things like that, it's a great way just to practice a few times. If you do this two or three times, you paint this painting two or three different times, anytime you um, might find that you're going to create a painting with some birds and whatever, from a photograph or from an art book, whatever it is, you'll actually uh, have a much easier time because you've practiced it a few times and then you'll, and painted it a few times, and then when you get to it, and if in the future you'll be like, oh, I did this before. This is, and you'll just remember it, and it'll go a lot easier than trying to hash it out from the uh, start, from never having done this before. So I am uh, just really excited. I hope everyone's going to try this out. We'll get started in just a few minutes, and uh, you saw the. This is the finished painting, so you can again work from this if you want. Uh, once you go through the whole video, then you can come back to the beginning and use this for your uh, your. Um, subject matter to paint from and to draw from too. It's probably pretty easy to draw from this because you have those really good dark shapes here. Okay, we'll see you in just a second again. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll get started. Hi everybody, Chris Petri here. Welcome. Come on in. We're having a great time. We're going to be doing some really beautiful uh, birds on this paint on this uh, episode here. We're going to do some beautiful um, we're going to do a, a small duck and s some shorebirds and, and a, uh, um, a crow, and we're just going to have a fun time. We're going to, I have uh, various um, wood carved decoys and uh, replicas of birds I've gotten at uh, local um, antique shops and then some some out uh, in my travels uh, on vacation and so forth I always go into the antique shops and see if I could find some decoys so this is a duck decoy here and uh, so I'm gonna have these set up across from me so there's uh, th the main thing for this uh, episode is you saw the finished painting just a few seconds ago so work from my finished painting uh, work from my finished drawings too as well you just hit pause when I'm done drawing right at that moment and then once you know and then you can work from there you can of course work along with me as we go it's up to you I leave it up to you how you want to work out your um, uh, process uh, when you're working along here on these videos um, but this is just more of a real fun free time to create some um, birds and ducks and, and things like that they're fun to do and uh, so I'm going to put this in my I'm actually, I set them across on a uh, table across from me and I made the table actually really high so I actually did some innovative, um, uh, I guess I, I put a uh, some foam board um, propped up with some wood on a window so to try to get it up to eye level so I'm looking at actually the eye level of this so if you can imagine I'm looking straight across and I'm seeing at eye level the table like so. So now when I'm drawing these birds and the duck here, this duck decoy and the birds, I'm looking at it in a really kind of a more simple angle. If I was to set my uh, decoys and my wood um, birds on a table and I'm looking and if I was looking down on a table, it would be a little more challenging, a little more difficult to do the drawings and to do this type of a painting. So I try to keep things at a eye level so that it's almost like a two-dimensional drawing and painting. And what's really beautiful about this is this composition will be very um, 
I guess like patternistic. It's got a pattern to it. It's all birds and, and uh, a duck and some birds. You know, it's going to look really cool. It's got some real uh, symmetry and pa pattern to it. That always looks really good. And uh, so let's get started. The first thing I'll do is I, before I'm going to draw on my watercolor paper, I am going to start out with some printer paper. And what I'll do is with the printer paper, I'm just going to sketch one time a practice run. Just so I can kind of get a feel for the the setup I have across from me. So I'm going to look at this and I'll start maybe with the I'm going to start with the duck here. And I'll take my time. I'm just going to do a contour drawing. I'm going to take my time and slowly go. I'm just going to go across. I'm just going to try to, I'm just contour drawing, looking across for me. I look across, I look back at my paper, I keep looking back and forth, back and forth, so that I'm... Okay, so I have my... My duck decoy there. Then I'm going to start over here and look about this way here. And that's about level. That's about level going straight, straight level like this. So I'm, I'm always kind of looking for the angles on this. And you don't, don't be afraid to um, take your pencil and sort of hold it up to what you're, hold it up to what you're drawing or, so you can always take your pencil and hold it up to what you're looking at. Take your time and say, okay, how, what's the, what's the angle of the bottom of the bird? Oh, it's kind of level. So it's level. Then you come down to your paper and you say, okay, level. That's pretty much straight like that, level. So you check your angles. This duck decoy, duck decoy was a little bit on an angle this way up here. So I kind of captured that. It's a little bit of an angle there. And then uh, this one here is... This bird is a shorebird. And it's up like this. And then it goes up like that. And it's got to swoop down like that. And this one has a long beak. And then I'm going to go over here. And uh, this one here is, uh, let's see. Okay, so that's right about there. And it's not too far back there when it comes up this way. And and then I try to locate the eye. That's always important to try to the eye and the beak is important to uh, locate those when you're when we're doing some of some of my um, uh, wooden uh, wooden um, replicas don't have eyes. Some do, some don't. So I try to kind of locate them though. Anyway, this one does have one painted on, and this one here is a little bit. And again, this is just my first run, my first practice. You know. It's always good if you can do this first, do a first practice on a, on a piece of printer paper. You get familiar with the um, with the uh, setup that you have, and then it goes a lot easier when you go to do it onto your uh, paper here, your watercolor paper. So this way you've already practiced it one time, just to get the feel for things. You know, in your mind you'll you'll kind of recall and say, "Oh yeah, I remember that. I I got that angle over there with this or that." So this here is. Uh, this is one of the stands, the decoy stand. 
And this one here is over here. Like that. Like so. And let's see, we're over here now. Let's, uh, this one has very little This has very little, and the great thing about doing a practice run is you can just go right over with darker lines and kind of like, there's very little showing the top, the top of the uh, decoy uh, uh, pedestal or stand. So that that's how I, I can just do that darker, it doesn't really bother me. And then here we're going to do our blackbird and I go up like this and okay and now I go like that and then a soft swoop down this way And then I check my lines and say, okay, I see some feathers on his back, his or her back there, that are just a little bit about the same, the same plumb line as the bottom of this base here. So that gives me a location of where I need to start making that little line there with the feathers. And then the rest of the feathers, the tail, tail section, just goes out like this. Like that. And that's good. Like that. Okay, so look, we got all of this completed. Uh, I'm also painting into the light. I'm setting my setup here. It's uh, on, a, again, a foam board, like so. So my foam board is resting on my window sill over here. So if my window's there, I kind of set this thing up resting on the, my foam board is resting on top of my window. It's a, a double hung window, so it's got a, a ledge on it, the window itself, like that. And then over here I have a, <clears throat> I think I set up a, a light stand and I just taped it with some tape so that the foam board wouldn't fall over when I put the decoys on top. So I, I sometimes will you know, kind of rig things up in the in the studio here. You have to sometimes do that. You have to rig some stuff around. Um, I've used boxes, like you can use empty um, empty uh, shipping boxes, and you can stack them on top of each other and tape them together. So you, you can actually elevate some some places. You can put you know a stand together. You can make like a makeshift stand where you can get some things up to eye level. This um, foam board that I'm using now, it's a little bit lower than eye level it's probably about where my shoulders are so there is a little bit of you know I can see the top of this table a little bit so it does give me a little bit of an angle where I'm looking a touch there's a little bit of an angle to it so you can kinda of see there is I'm seeing the top of the table or the foam board so to speak but you know you can set things up so you get it perfectly at eye level so that you wouldn't even see any of the top of the table you would just see the um, you know pretty much like this you would just see the top of the foam board and that's it and then everything else would be on top like so so you would see everything just as it is there so I'm just kind of that would make it more simple where you wouldn't be worrying about angles here I'm worrying about these angles the top of the the uh, decoy pedestal and uh, a couple other spots here too this one and you can also leave those out because you're going to be working from my drawing so it might be easy because you have, kind of have my drawing to go by which is really helpful you can use my my sketch or my uh, preliminary sketch and contour drawing once we get that started but that's pretty much what we do we we take this scene we practice it one time kind of feel things out it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to get everything just right you just try to get it as close as you can and as you do that you're going to already be preparing yourself so that when you go in you do your next uh, preliminary sketch on your paper and then ultimately your contour drawing which is another 
drawing over the top of your preliminary sketch on your watercolor paper, you'll have done, the th you'll have done it three times. You'll have dr drawn this scene three times. This is the most important because if you do this the first time, then you kind of can just put this up across from you and you can say, okay, now I remember. I drew this the first time and, and you have that across from you and you can use it as a reference and then you continue on. So that's what we're going to do. Let's take a, a quick break and then um, we'll come back and we'll do our preliminary sketch on our uh, paper here, our watercolor paper. This is Fabriano Extra White Artistico, Fabriano, Fabriano Artistico paper, extra white, rough paper. And um, we'll use this and we have our standard colors all over our palette. I use the same palette for the last 10 years now. Same colors all the time. I might add a few here and there once in a while, but for the most part, this is my standard palette, so we have that. I'll give this a little spritz, and we'll be uh, prepping up for the uh, painting. So let's take a quick break, though. It's good to take a few breaks here and there as you go, just to rest up a little bit, rest your concentration, and rest your, your, um, your mind, so that when you're coming back in again to do more drawing, you're kind of a little more fresh. And you don't, you know, you're not as uh, feeling a little as, as tired. Okay, so I'll be right back and we'll start our preliminary drawing. And I always mention too, please subscribe. That subscribe button right down there below the screen, that red button, subscribe. You hit that. This way you kind of stick with us here each week. You'll get that alert in your um, uh, YouTube account saying that we have a new video coming out. And this way you can just get right into it, watch it one time, get familiar with it, and then you'll be ready to go. When you want to do the painting, you'll already have watched the video one time. You're kind of more familiar with it. Same thing goes with our sketching. That's what we do with our preliminary drawings and and so forth, as we're always trying to re repeat things over and over, and it gives us more of a familiar feeling with it, and then we can, uh, you know, definitely have more success with it. And always we say that repetition is the mother of skill. The more you repeat things over and over and over, the more your skill level will go way up. So that's what we're trying to do here, is keep repeating things over and over, the same format, the same process, the same techniques. You keep repeating these things over and over again, they become part of your your actual uh, style and your your techniques as a watercolor artist. Okay, so let's take a break and we'll come right back. Okay, everyone, welcome back again. We're getting started now. We're going to actually, uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a change. I hope you don't mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to make things easier for myself, and maybe this will be easier for you too in, in the studio when you're painting this, uh, uh, drawing and painting this uh, painting, is I'm just going to essentially, um, I'm going to take this and pretend that there's no tabletop on this uh, drawing. So when I'm looking across from me, I can actually change a little bit of what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm not going to be as critical with capturing this top of this foam board that I'm using to rest all my my duck decoy and um, my uh, wooden um, carvings, my wooden birds. So what I'll do is I'll just take it like this and I'm going to make a, a line like so. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually have this duck resting right on top of this line and I'm going to pretend that there's there's nothing that I can see on top of this table. So everything is going to be like this. So I'm going to take this and go like that. Maybe I can do this and maybe I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'm going to leave it a little more uh, just for design sake. I'm just going to put the line across the page like so and, and this line will just come straight down this way. I'm not going to have this in the picture over here. I'm just going to have this line here. That we won't see. So essentially this is what we're going to see. We're going to see all of these. They're all going to be dark tonal values, all the birds here, because we're painting into the light. The light is the window behind us. So we're just going to pretend there's lots of light. So you're just going to see silhouettes. This is going to be the dark darks. We'll do this in really dark paint, dark tonal values, and the rest will all be light behind. And this will be our line across here, and we won't put any of this tabletop on in the picture. We're just going to leave it 
more abstract. I hope that helps. I hope it's going to help me too as well. I like to sometimes catch a break when I can when I'm doing my paintings and drawings. So I'll make things easier for myself. This is one way I'm going to do it. We'll try that and see how it works. But I'll keep the same exact design of where the our birds are here because um, I'm leaving it set up and I'm working across from me. So I'm going to keep looking across from me versus, but I will refer to this occasionally as I'm going. This did come out, I'm pretty happy with this. this these look pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll even use this for my, um, I'll use both actually. I'll look both at my physical decoys I have set up across from me and I'll use this as well. So I'll use both of these to uh, create our painting here. So I'll set that across from me. I'll, I'll get my number nine. Uh, and always remember too, if you have to use a little bit of um, acetate or plastic, if you want to trace over your um, electronic device, if you're using a phone to follow along and you want to use some of that plastic acetate with some Sharpie marker to um, maybe draw out the um, shapes of the birds if it helps you a little bit because birds are a little challenging sometimes with the shapes how they look and you know if you do birds a lot uh, you, you know it's a little easier or if you do birds occasionally you kind of might have a feel for that but if you don't do birds that much and, and ducks and things like that um, it, it might be good you can use some acetate you put that over your phone and you kind of just draw with a sharpie so you could just take this and put this over your computer screen or you can put this on top of your phone you kind of can get a feel for things um, and then you can just kind of trace, you know, you can trace kind of the shapes of the birds like that and the duck here. So you can kind of, you can trace over the top of your um, computer screen or phone, whatever you're using, TV, just to get some ideas. And then you can always transfer that onto the paper. You can, you know, tape this down to your paper. You can tape that down to your paper, and then when you're drawing it, you can just lift up. You can use the shadow. If you have a light above you, it kind of, there's a shadow that's created. I don't know if you can see that. So you can kind of carefully work underneath it with a pencil, like so. And you can work underneath with a pencil with the shadowing a little bit, get a rough estimate of the shape of each of the birds and then and then you can just have an easier time when you go in and paint you'll already have your bird shapes really nice and again the, the thing with, uh, the thing with doing things with things that can help uh, kind of get you to the to the next level if you want to have a beautiful painting of this type of scene you can use a little bit of plastic a little bit of tracing paper you're the artist you have to figure out how you can kind of do that Maybe at first you need to use a little bit of, you know, tracing paper or some acetate, some plastic to kind of get you familiar with the shapes of whatever it is, whatever subject matter you might not be familiar with until you're kind of more, you've done it five or six or ten times and then and then after a while you won't need to use that. Of course, you just, you kind of already have the, the feeling of it and the, the flow of the shapes of things, like let's say birds and ducks and uh, maybe uh, dogs or cats, whatever you want to draw. You just use a little bit of help, help aids to get you going and we all use these as artists. I hope everyone's using some things to make your life life a little bit easier. Okay, so now we're going to, I'll just make a, I'm going to just make my, uh, I'm just going to make the, uh, I'll put our, I'm just going to put a, a rectangle on the paper with pencils so I know exactly where everything is. This is my picture frame, my rectangle, everything's there. And then um, I might just start my drawing along the bottom of my um, rectangle here. Okay, so I'm going to start out here. And I might... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to start here. I 
I'm just taking my time. I'm going right in and doing a contour drawing since we did that first sketch. I feel pretty comfortable. I don't think I'm going to need to uh, to do a preliminary sketch. So I'm just going to come come right in and start doing my drawing. Okay, I already see, maybe I've... Okay, this is a perfect time. You grab a, a kneaded eraser and you, if you think you maybe started a little bit with an issue, you just do a little bit of erasing. I could have done this again. I should have started with the, with the um, I should have started with a, with the, uh, preliminary sketch because then usually this that avoids that erasing like that but let's keep going and we're gonna do the back here it doesn't have to be perfect again we're just trying to get the shapes of things because this is just really cool having a fun time with this okay this next shape is I'm looking at the ducks I'm looking at the duck, my uh, decoy, duck decoy here, and I'm saying the uh, the stand for the uh, next bird is about three quarters of the way across the duck decoys back here. It's not quite in the middle; it's about three quarters. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get that. You can use a ruler here if you feel like you need to. If you might need to use a ruler to keep a line straight, that's fine. I'll use a ruler here, and then I'll just put a light line like that. And I'm going to look at it and say, all right, how far up is this? And I'm going to shorten it up maybe a little bit. And it's about, if I hold my pencil up, so I'm holding my pencil up in front of me like this and looking at the duck decoy, the bottom of this bird is a little bit above the, the head of the duck decoy. So see, sometimes we have to check our, our lines like that and check where things are because I would have started this up here more and then I'd be going out of the picture. Does that make sense? So if you just keep checking, you can kind of get a feel for um, where things are by looking at, you know, seeing, well, where's the bottom of this bird over here? Well, and then I look and I hold my pencil up and I say, well, it's just a little bit above the top of this duck decoy's head here. So that's how I get this line. And then the bottom of this bird here is like so. It's and what I want to do here is continue with this. I'd rather start this this little here. Then I can also look and say, all right, where is maybe the head of this? bird here. I look down at my duck and I say, okay, if I if I go halfway on the duck's back, about there, that's where the head of the bird is. So then I can put a line up here maybe. And then I just work my way up, like so. And if it's not perfect, no big deal, but at least I get it somewhat close. Like that. We make that round shape there, like that, and then we come around this way, and that looks pretty good. And this one has a longer beak, so that looks interesting. So we take that and just, we make our longer beak here, it gets a little bit thinner as it goes this way. Like so. And then we can put the eye there. It's going to be dark though. These are all very dark. Um, we're painting into the light. OK. 
Okay, so that's our second bird. Looks pretty good. Okay. Like that. I just want to get a little more of that roundness to the back. And we can continue now. We're going to start out, and now we're going to we're going to start this uh, bird here. Now what we can do is make things a little more simple for ourselves. Across from me, I notice actually. We see a little bit of the, a little bit of the uh, prop for the, for this bird here, the shorebird. Now we're just going to look at it and say, okay, it's going this way. So this, the bottom of this bird is pretty much level, like this. So that's important to kind of get those angles if you're looking at the bird's, you know, shape and and how it is looking in the picture you kind of want to see if there's angles to it or if it's, if it's kind of level. This shorebird here is it's kind of going up a little bit like this and it's not too far back it's kind of foreshortened here so it's the tendency would be to draw it really long but it's actually foreshortened here and then we come up like so we make a little bit of a swoop that way and then this way, this bird's a little smaller, so we're going to And these are carved, wood carved birds, so the people that created these did a beautiful job. And then his beak is here. And we'll just get that a little more sharper. There we go. Like that. And then his his or her eye is here. And then I can just There we go. So we have three of our birds done now. We're gonna do our the next one here. And again we'll use our ruler. I'm gonna use my ruler here to make our last bird here, our blackbird, and he's about here. So let's do this. We'll make the... Okay, and then I look and I say, where is the bottom of the the blackbird that's in the scene that I have set up across from me? Where's the bottom of his, uh, his breast and the bottom of his uh, body? And if I look across from me, it's about this approximately the same height as the head of this small shorebird here. So we're going to make that note and say, okay, we're going to want to start it there. Maybe we'd want to start it a little lower. If we think we're going to go off the page here, which I'm kind of thinking I might, I don't want to have the problem of drawing my, my blackbird over here and it going off the page and not looking good. Obviously, we want to keep it within our picture frame. So I'm going to start it a little lower. In actuality, when I look across from me, it's the bottom of the blackbirds about the top but again we does this make sense we always want to kind of think ahead of things a little bit and say all right you know what i kind of sense i might go out of the picture with this one so let me just drop the bottom of this bird down a little bit that's not going to hurt anything and that's how you can adjust things when you're <clears throat> doing your compositions and things and your paintings you can always adjust you don't have to feel like you're exactly have to follow everything you see you can change things around a little bit <clears throat> so i'm going to do this and then go up this way uh, and maybe I'll make this blackbird a little smaller maybe than, than in actuality. So I'm kind of looking and seeing and then here I'm going to do the beak. Like that. And then it's a soft turn like that. And it's not perfect. I can always, again, 
a little bit of an eraser just to kind of like that that looks a little better and then when I come over here after I go over the top of the head of the bird then I kind of start to get that feel for the slope of the back of the bird with the feathers and I think that looks pretty good and we're gonna continue here um, it's pretty level across this way so I'm looking across from me and I'm holding up my pencil and saying yeah that's about right it's about level and then I just go across like so and then I start to taper down for the tail feathers of this bird and over here I notice the there's some noticeable feather feathers over here that are kind of sitting above the others and that's what we do we do that and we'll just go out of the picture with that that's fine and then we can we'll do our like so so we have our birds all completed now we'll, all, we can, all we have to do is have fun and paint that's it so we took some time it did take us a little bit of time here but you can kind of see how I just went ahead and did this I hope you'll do this as you're uh, drawing this scene at home in your studio at home and you know if maybe you're just have a nice sketchbook on your lap and your sofa or your easy chair however you like to work at your kitchen table wherever you like to work this is really a lot of fun and it's just a matter of taking our time checking level lines to see so if you're going to work, I hope you'll work from this. I hope you'll hit pause and work from this. Um, maybe what I'll do is I will go over this one more time. Let me go over with a little darker pencil line here so that if you're going to do this from home and you can just, I'm just going to do this. I'll do this a little darker. I'm just basically tracing over this. Tra tracing is a great way to uh, kind of relook at the lines again. And then we're going to go right around here. Same thing, just tracing along the lines we already drew. I'm just making it a little darker so you can kind of see that. If you want to work from this drawing, you'll have a lot easier time once I'm finish with the darker line here. It's a little easier to see. I know sometimes the camera lighting isn't the greatest. It's tough to see the pencil lines a lot of times. And I'll use my ruler one more time. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, we'll be right back. We're just gonna take a quick break. We're, we'll come back and we'll start painting. And um, I think I'm going to try to Okay, we'll be right back and we'll begin to paint. All right, hey everybody, we're getting back in to the swing of things here. Um, we're going to do some painting now, and uh, the one thing I wanted to kind of um, do here for the painting portion is um, let's try to use a large brush here. I'm using a number uh, 12 watercolor brush, so a size 12. So I want to use a large brush, and this is going to um, sort of safeguard against maybe um, 
spending too much time and, and uh, maybe overworking anything. So, and again, we're painting into the light here in this scene. So everything is pretty much um, darker tonal values and we're going to leave the background uh, white paper. But again, I want to use a, a larger brush for maybe the, um, the larger portions of the bird and then the birds and the duck. And then maybe I'll use a smaller brush for the, um, I'll use a couple different smaller brushes maybe for details, but we'll, we'll uh, deal with that in a little while. But let's start out with a really large brush here. And we're going to start out with, um, we we'll use a kind of a, a simple color scheme here maybe. I'm trying to think here what we can use. Um, You know, sometimes we can just take our colors and put them out. Payne's gray, ivory black, that might be our blackbird color. And then maybe, let's see, the other birds here are more kind of wood color. Let's kind of stick with the colors that we have. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna try to reinvent the wheel here. Let me so I'm gonna use some raw umber, some yellow ochre raw sienna, maybe a little cerulean blue. I want to do warm and cool kind of a look. We don't want to just go all warm colors. Let's get some warm and cool. So that's for the more wood colors. They're all wood. I think my my duck decoy is like a plastic or like a, um, yeah, kind of like a composite plastic, but the rest of them are all like really are wood, wood carvings, but they're all different. This is black, the blackbird's black, and then the shorebird's like a tan with a dark brown tail. Let me kind of draw that in there too. I forgot to add that little bit of, he's got a little bit of uh, coloring on his, uh, back uh, his feathers on his back there and so we'll just we'll do that and there's a little I'm gonna let that go I'm not gonna put any coloring on the rest all right so let's get started let's maybe we'll start with our duck decoy that's a little bit darker maybe we'll do some cobalt blue burnt umber raw umber and that should be good and again we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel I'm just going to try to and again I'm using a large brush here so we can cover lots of ground there we go and uh, we have to mix up some more There we go. And there's a little bit of a, a line here. And it gets a little lighter, the wash. So we can go over here. use some black in that too, darken it up a little bit. So I'm going to kind of mix around my colors. Now the thing is if you go back in to do a little bit of extra wash on something, you have to do it really fast, you, um, really quickly, like as soon as you get this wash in here, if you're going to add in a little more, let's say darker color, you have to get do it right away, very quickly. And uh, that'll be a big thing to help your washes look better. And there we go. Okay. And I'll let I'll let this go. I'll do the darker end of the bill of this uh, duck decoy. Once I uh, And again, you can add darker colors. Then I just rinse my brush off and then dry it off on a paper towel or a tissue a little bit. 
so there's not too much water on it and then I can blend in that darker dark I put in there like so and uh, let's move on to our next let's do this one up here raw umber this one's a little lighter burnt umber raw umber I'll mix a little more because I'm noticing I'm running out of paint quick so that's why it's another benefit if you have a larger brush on a painting like this because it's large washes really so then we add some cool a little bit too much there and then let's do this here get some paint on there and then I can just go up like so And what's great about when you're painting this type of scene, you can get a little more look back at your subject matter. I'm always looking across from me and I'm saying, wow, I can add a little bit of a, I see a curve over here in the, the, the feathers a little more than what I was when I drew the, uh, that bird. So I can add some additional shape to, the, uh, to my drawing. There we go. Really just carefully adding that little bit of a so that looks pretty good. And just add a little couple splashes here and there. And if you see you went over a line, no big deal. Lift up quick, like that. There we go. And let's see here, let's do another. And what I'm thinking the fun part of this is when we use a larger brush like this, you can really go through this really quick and it, it becomes a lot more fun because you're not really fussing around too much with too many washes. You kind of just, you mix, you get a feel for it as you're going. You, you start to notice how much you need to mix in the paint box here. So you notice when I started, I started with too little much, you know, too little paint and, and wash. So now I'm making my washes a little larger in my paint box so that I can cover a lot of area and uh, that works better and then we're going to go over here and we'll do our so we have some Payne's Gray, Ivory Black uh, a little bit of Burnt Umber in there we're going to get some good nice, don't mix it up too much see what's nice about this is you can kind of mix the paint colors just a little bit does that make sense? can you see that? mix the colors just a tiny bit but leave every color so that you can kind of see the diff different colors within the wash that'll it'll it'll be the same when you put it on the paper you'll see the different colors as we put them onto the paper versus like you know like a blender just blending blending you know keeping we keep doing that we're not going to see any uh, beautiful uh, color variations so if you want to get those nice color variations don't over mix things just have a fun time and I'm just going back in. Some Payne's Gray, some Ivory Black, a little bit of um, Burnt Umber, maybe a little bit of Cerulean Blue, a little bit of um, Cobalt Blue. And you can get those great color mixes you want right on the paper. And this is a little bit like this, more of a curve to that, like so. 
and there's more light on this top so I'll rinse off my brush again dry off the water I don't want too much water on this now and I'll just have a little bit of a lighter tone up here and up here it's darker Paints gray, ivory black, a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of uh, cobalt blue. I don't overmix it. I make sure I don't lean into my paint over here. And I just carefully keep an eye on the point of the brush so that I don't go over my line. Then I can spin around this way and I kind of turn my hip and rest my hip against my art table so I'm kind of turning my whole body so that I can get this over here like so. Like that. And then I try to smooth this out a little bit. pretty good then I'm just gonna really carefully try to change up that wash so I'll put a little bit of this Good. A couple splashes. So I'm just going to do a couple splashes. Not too many, just a few. That's all. I'm going to carefully do this uh, beak of this bird here and probably see if I could do a couple of our eyes. And again, I'm trying to go quickly here, have fun with it, and not overwork it. And I think we're almost completed here. I, what else do we need to do? Oh, a little bit of the dark here. A burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine blue. A little bit of uh, Payne's gray and ivory black. A little more burnt umber. It's more of a brownish color. And then I'm just going to carefully put that onto the back here, like so. And I do it very carefully. Rinse off my brush, dry off the um, paint, and then just get a very light wash here for this. And I think that's perfect. So let's let this uh, dry, but I, I think this is perfect actually. This looks great. This is a great study for birds and duck decoys, and you can do this over and over. Um, you can use this. You can look up pictures online. Um, you can work from art books. Um, so there's so many fun things you can do with maybe just you painting, you know, drawing and painting lots of the same thing. And if you put that into a painting, it looks great. So if we were to put uh, a bunch of uh, really interesting, um, let's say, dogs or cats or uh, maybe houses or maybe trees, whatever it is. If you paint a lot of the same thing in that one uh, portion of your rectangle here, your picture frame, it kind of looks really good just in, in, its, uh, you know, in and of itself. It looks really fantastic just doing this type of a study. So I hope you'll do this. Does this make sense to have a good time painting the same thing? in repetition. Repetition is a design pattern that really works great. It looks fantastic. A lot of artists use it and uh, so we're going to use it too. We're going to work on it, try it out. You can come up with your own ideas too, your own creative ideas of how you can use repetition in your uh, artwork. It really does look fantastic. 
Um, so I'm going to uh, just uh, maybe, I think that's it for right now. This is perfect. I might add a couple darker colors. Let me add in a few things here. Um, this beak on this uh, duck decoy was darker. that and then it's going to dry a little and again let it dry that's when if you want to do the eyes and some additional washes to the beaks and the bills and and what and what what have you the best thing is to let this dry 100% and then you go back in because you can see I'm having problems when I'm adding in colors to these damp washes they're starting to blossom and balloon and cauliflower out and kind of make a mess so I'm gonna leave it as it is but we did get that darker um, bill here on the duck decoy that looks good but again I'll let that dry maybe before I go too much more with that detail and the rest I think is pretty good and I uh, hope you had fun and we'll see you on the next video bye bye